Alright, so for this video, because this is our last video, we're going to be uh, covering a topic which is fairly complicated and fairly in-depth. We're still talking about sorting techniques, but this is probably one of the more complicated sorting techniques. And it's going to be using the concept of recursion and, you know, that using recursion to solve problems to solve the problem of sorting. So, I've got the pretty much the exact same, well, it's actually exactly the same, it's copy and pasted setup from the last video. So we've got our starting array with values put in the reverse order, making them the most complicated. But the sorting technique we're going to be using, or the sorting technique we're going to be implementing today, is classified as a divide and conquer sorting technique. Remember that that's what recursion does. It makes it reduces the problem down to smaller and smaller and smaller levels until it's extremely easy to solve, and then using that solution to work back up. So it's scaling a small solution to a larger problem. So what this sorting does, this sorting technique is called the quick sort. What this algorithm does is it breaks it down into halves, sorting each half bit by bit. And then once it's sorted all those halves, it's the entire data set is sorted. So to demonstrate this, uh, there's a little graphic I found here. The basics or the basis of the quick sort is based upon the concept of a pivot. The pivot is the center point of the data set of the array. So everything to the left of that pivot is going to be smaller than, and everything to the right of that pivot is going to be greater than, or vice versa, depending on the order in which you're sorting. We're doing a least to greatest sorting technique here. So you choose your pivot, and the pivot has to be chosen. It should be chosen intelligently. Ideally, the pivot should be done so that the number of switches to the left, or the number of swaps to the right and left, are equal. Now that's not going to happen because in order for you to find the middle point, you have to go through every data point in the array to find the center. That's going to take a lot of time. It's probably actually going to take more time than doing the sort itself. So in order to shortcut that, the way most people decide to do it is by just saying, I'm going to choose the pivot to be the value in the physical center of the array. So once that's chosen, there, you take the array from two sides. You take it from the beginning and you take it from the end. And you move down, finding elements on the left, which are greater than the pivot, and elements on the, le or on the right, which are smaller than the pivot, and then swapping them so that everything on the left is smaller and everything on the right is greater. And you do this over and over again until you get down to this step. And as you can see, everything on the left here, everything on the left is smaller than the pivot value of 5 and everything on the right is greater. And then once you've done that, you then repeat that technique for this half and this half. And every time you do that, it's going to get smaller and smaller until you're down to just one data point where you can't sort it anymore. And by that point, you've sorted all the data. So this is using recursion to split the array further and further to sort smaller and smaller bits. So that is how the quick sort works. And again, this is going to be quite involved. I'm going to code this along, at, or I'm going to code this and explain along as we go what each bit does. And hopefully by the end, it should all make sense. And you should have a quick sorting algorithm. So to get started, I'm going to create a function called void quick sort. And it's going to take our array. And then it's going to take the left and it's going to take the right. So what this is doing is it's it's so that when we split, we know what part of the array. We're going to keep recycling. Uh, where is it? Yep, that's not it. We're going to keep recycling the same array over and over again. We're just going to be telling this function to use smaller and smaller bits of it. And that's what the left and right do. So at the beginning, the left and the right are going to be the very beginning and ends of the array. But as it continues on, we're going to be using smaller and smaller values for left and right. So when we call quick sort, we're going to start by saying quick sort array, and 0 is the most left, and 9 is the most right. 
So 0 is this value and 9 is this value. Now in the function, uh, in the function, we have to, we're going to create some index variables. So I'm going to create int i equals left and int j or int m equals right. And then int pivot equals left plus right. Uh, hit insert accidentally. Where's insert? There it is. So left plus right divided by 2. And that's going to give us the exact center of the array. So that should give us 0 plus 9 is 9. Divide that by 2 is 4.5. But because it's an int, we cast 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to pick 6 to be our pivot point for the very first iteration. Then I'm going to say while i is less than or equal to j or m so what uh, what this is going to keep doing is it's going to keep checking for the point where i and m cross over when that happens we've moved past the center pivot point and we need to split so while i is less than m while the array value at i is less than the pivot, or the array at the pivot, pivot, there we go, we're going to say i++. plus plus. So we're going to keep going until we find a value where the array value at i, so we're going to keep moving from the left until we find a point or a value where it's greater than the pivot, and then we're going to stop because that's what this is. It's going to go until it finds, in this case, 6. It's going to stop. And then we have to move from the right to find another value which is less than the pivot to swap. So the value that's greater than ends up on the right, and the value that's less than ends up on the left. So while array i is less than the array at the pivot, it's going to increment, then it's going to stop. Then while array j is greater than the array at pivot, so this is coming from the right side, we say or m plus plus, that should be m, not j, there we go. Then, once we're at that point, once they've both stopped, what I'm going to do is say, if i is less than or equal to m, so what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that these two values should in fact be swapped. Um, if they move past the pivot point accidentally, then if they swap, this would be bad. So if i is less than m, we're making sure we're still within the parameters of this loop. We're going to use swap. We're going to swap array at i and with array at m. Then once we've swapped them, we're going to increment i and we're going to decrement m. So ideally what's going to happen is these are both going to stop at the pivot point and then they're going to cross over the pivot point and then that's going to decide, uh, if I bring back that image, so it's going to get to this point at the pivot and then it's going to cross over here. So the right now dictates the rightmost part of the left half and the L dictates the leftmost half of the right or the leftmost part of the right half. So if we go back to the code that's what that this bit does. So then once we've swapped if right is greater than J or M if left is less than M We're going to quick sort the array starting from left to m. And then if i is less than right, we're going to quick sort again, array 
from I to right. And what this is doing is it's making sure that we still have bits of the array left to sort. If M and I are left and right um, respectively, it means that we've hit the edge bounds of the array and we're done. There's nothing left to sort. Now remember what I did here. The left is still the leftmost bound and the right is still the rightmost bound. That's not going to change. What is going to change is the M and I values. Those are going to get ever closer to those final bounds until when they're equal, these two will never run, which means we've hit, again, we've hit the edge bound. So it's not going to run the quick sort again. So if I copy and paste this so that it outputs the sorted data, and I run this, I get a psych fault which is because, ah, this is supposed to be decrement, not increment. So if I run that one more time, there we go. So now we get the proper output. So what we start with is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, data in the reverse order. And what we end up with is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the sorted data. So that's how the quick sort works. So let's dive into this just a little more closely. So it's this bit here that is providing the recursion, that's providing the problem solving bit. So every time this method is run, it's finding smaller and smaller sections of the co or of the array to try and sort. And the way it's doing that is very similar to the way the selection sort works. It's just by swapping two values so that the lesser value is on one side and the greater value is on the other. And it's just that basic principle of swapping lesser and greater values into proper slots that the entire data set gets sorted. Now, the left side and the right side never cross over. The closest they get to each other is at the beginning when the left and the right are right next to each other. But you can see that... in this in this little diagram here, every time it gets split, each section gets or becomes a smaller and smaller entire data set essentially. So this half here, this left half, gets split into two more data sections, and if this were larger, it gets split into another two and into another two, and so you have this incredibly large tree essentially of sorting that's getting done. And then by the properties of recursion and by the property that this is essentially a stack, it all gets sewn back up together in the reverse order. It backtraces what it's doing to give you a complete data set, it, it, to give you a sorted data set. And that's probably the coolest thing about recursion being used to sort data is the fact that it can just move backwards to put everything back together. So that is it for this video and actually the series. Uh, I hope this has made sense because I know that the quick sort is a fairly complicated sorting technique, especially for an introduction programming course. The reason I showed this to you is because the selection sort and the quick sort are two very common sorting techniques. There are, um, well, at least in the realm of education when it comes to programming, there are slightly more common sorting techniques which run faster and are more versatile. But these are two very good techniques for demonstrating how sorting is done. And specifically quicksort is very good at showing how recursion can be used in problem solving applications. So take this back, watch this video, look at the code, go through the debugger, again, follow it line by line, see what it does, and it, I don't blame you if this doesn't make sense. You do have to go through this quite a few times in order for it to make sense. But when you do, it is a really cool thing to see. So that is it for this series. I've hoped you enjoyed it. I've been Human Hard Drive, and thanks for watching.